If your GarageBand tracks are sounding dull and lifeless and you want to add some variety and a little bit of flair, then using an Alchemy Synth pad is a really cool way to go. So in this video, I'm going to show you how. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live Today, where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. And today we're looking at a way to do that in GarageBand because we've got our Alchemy synth loaded up here in GarageBand. And I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to use the arpeggiator to actually create some really interesting pads to sit underneath the rest of your track and just add some flavor and some life to what can be a bit of a dull and boring song, which is is what I had in this track here. So let's jump in and take a look. So we're here in GarageBand. This is my new song called Imagination. It sounds like this. So we've got a lot going on there and you can hear like in that little post bit, you can hear the synth sound floating through there. So when I was building this track up, I added some bass here. I've got some 909 kicks there. We've got some drums. The synth piano is in here and we've got our organ. So the synth piano and organ were doing this. It sounds like this. So that's already creating a bit of a bass for that. We've then got Benny on the drums here. If we bring our bass back in here, we've got two bass tracks. We've got our stereo movement and our barely phased tracks, and they add this. And then we've also got, we'll come back to the start here, I've also added the modern 909 kick drum using the beat sequencer. And there'll be some links down in the description that will explain more about how to do all of this stuff. And plus, I have a complete review of this song coming up in the next couple of days. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to check that one out. But all together, they sounded like this. <laughs> So not bad, right? But there was something missing. It was a little bit dry with just those tracks in here. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to add in something that was just going to sit underneath everything. So whenever I have this problem, I reach for the Alchemy synth. Now let's scroll to the bottom here and hit the plus button. We've got a lot of tracks in this song, but we'll hit the plus button. I'll just show you how we can go into the Alchemy synth. So we choose our keyboard and we tap on Alchemy synth. And now by default, we've got our epic cloud formation here. So if we tap on some keys here, We've got that, which is okay. So I could just have like a, like a, that could be a pad. It could just be a C minor chord there and then to an F chord. So we could just use that. But what I like to do is use the arpeggiator. So this little button here will take us to the arpeggiator. And it's very similar on the iPad, or the iPhone, whatever size device. I've just got the 12.9 inch iPad Pro here at the moment, but your screen may look a little bit different, but it'll be the same sort of, same sort of thing in the same sort of place. We'll turn the run on there, and then you can start updating these. You can change the note order, you can change the note rate, and you can change the octave range. And again, there's a video that you can check out, which is linked up the top and down below that explains all about the arpeggiator. But if we now just come in here and if we hold down those same two C notes, you get a very different sort of sound there. And without having to go to a whole lot of effort, you can literally just hold down two notes and get that sound. And even cooler, if we hold down the uh, C minor chord here, and let's add in a C up the top here, and even another C, And you can hear that I've just moved my finger over to the F. So if you're basically just following, if you're following the, the chords, and again, if you don't know about this sort of stuff, you can also use the chord mode here. So we can come over to the chord mode. And you can use it there if you want just more of the consistent chords. But if you're here on the keyboard, you can play around with it. And most of the things are going to sound pretty cool. Any of the any of the uh, notes that you hold down here will actually work with whatever you're doing as long as they're within the scale of what you're playing here. So what we'll do, we'll come back here and I'll show you what I did with this. So right up the top here, I did basically exactly that. So if we solo this track here and hit play... So 
So I set my arpeggiator to play along with this track. And if we come in here, I'll uh, show you what it was. So again, we'll just hold down those C chords. And again, we'll throw in the C minor chord there. And then we can move it over to the F. If it add a top F. And this just creates a real, really good pad to sit underneath your tracks without you having to go to a lot of effort and actually write a part in. So arpeggiators are cool because they're a bit of a cheat, a bit of a hack, but when you're using them for a pad sound, I think it's a totally cool hack to use. So in the end, the sound that I ended up getting really works with the rest of this. So let's bring it in with these two treble instruments and take a listen to what it sounds like in this opening part. So it's just filling in the gaps there between the instruments and it's giving us a much fuller sound. If we then bring it in with all the rest of our bass and our, uh, our percussion instruments, we get this kind of sound. <laughs> You can hear there is when I pull it up, I pull the volume up, you can hear it too much. But if it's just sitting under the mix, you barely even notice it's there, except that when you remove it, you do notice it's not there because it's adding that. It's just meaning there's something always playing there. And that's the whole point of a pad. It's to pad out the track. It's called a pad for a reason. So you want pads in your tracks to pad things out. And whether you're making a rock track, a metal track, R&B track, a pad can really help out. And using the Alchemy synth or any other synth sound or synth instrument, and then using our arpeggiator, even if you hit the wrong note, then you can actually get a really cool sound. I hope you found this useful and that you can use this in a future song. There's two more videos linked down below that you may want to check out about the arpeggiator and about the alchemy synth. And you can subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon. I'll see you next time.